One criticism that's often directed to modern WWE is in relation to the lackluster way they present their referees. The referees in WWE are often presented as incompetent and they'll often be oblivious to cheating and villainous shenanigans even when they are crystal clear. However, from time to time, WWE allows their referees to shine. On rare occasions, WWE will allow their referees to be presented as competent, legitimate officials who know exactly what they're doing and won't fall for any hijinks. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times WWE referees outsmarted the wrestlers. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, the competent referee at WrestleMania 10. A WrestleMania 10 featured a classic ladder match between Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. Early on in the match, Ramon would be attacked by HBK's bodyguard Diesel and due to the match being no DQ, the referee had no official power to DQ HBK. However, when seeing Diesel attack Ramon, Earl Hebner decided to berate HBK in the middle of the ring before informing Diesel that he needed to go back to the locker room. The best thing about this was that it presented Hebner as a somewhat menacing referee and even the 7 foot tall Diesel wasn't going to go against his ruling. It was also an indication that Hebner wanted to keep the ladder match as fair as humanly possible and ejecting Diesel early on in this match was his way of doing this. Number 9. Throwing the key away at Money in the Bank 2010 the Nexus stable was running riot in 2010 and WWE referees at the 2010 Money in the Bank pay-per-view decided to assert their authority. John Cena was wrestling Sheamus in a steel cage match and naturally the Nexus attempted to get involved. When Nexus member Michael Tarver was about to cut the lock off the cage door, one referee would grab the bolt cutter and head to the backstage area. Then when the stable attempted to intimidate the other referee into handing over the key, the referee smartly threw the key into the crowd. The referee then pointed at the WWE logo on his shirt, indicating that if they are harmed in any way, then the punishment would be severe. Number 8. Knowing the character at Royal Rumble 2002 The 2002 Rumble opened up with an intercontinental title match between William Regal and Edge. Regal at this point in time had incorporated brass knuckles into his persona and he was using the dreaded weapon to win the majority of his matches. Before his match with Edge began, referee Nick Patrick would search the entire ringside area to ensure that Regal hadn't hidden away any brass knuckles. When Regal was in the ring, Patrick would search Regal's body and eventually find Regal's weapon of choice stashed away in his trunks. This was a great comedic spot, but it made it look like the referees actually watched and studied the wrestlers themselves, which is a fantastic touch. Number 7. Twin Magic Backfires on Raw and One of the common traits of the Bella Twins was the use of twin magic. During the matches, the two would often rotate without the referee knowing to obtain an unfair advantage. This was criticized by fans as it was evident that Brie and Nikki looked completely different, so it was kind of ridiculous that WWE referees couldn't tell them apart. Nevertheless, in the April 2013 episode of Raw, a referee finally saw sense and realized what the duo were doing. During a match between Brie Bella and Naomi, Twin Magic would strike, allowing Brie to get the win. However, after Naomi and her partner Cameron informed the referee of what happened, the referee re-examined the situation. It was then declared that Brie had lost via DQ. It was fantastic to see a referee finally act with a little bit of common sense. Number 6. Not Falling for the Miz's Antics at Extreme Rules 2017 One of the top matches on the Extreme Rules card saw the Miz take on Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental title. The match had an added stipulation that stated that if Ambrose was DQ'd, he would lose his title. A Miz naturally decided to try and get Ambrose disqualified throughout the match and one of the ways he did this was by getting his wife and manager Maurice to slap him. In theory, this should have been an immediate DQ, but the referee was smart enough to realize what Miz was doing and he ejected Maurice from ringside, allowing the match to continue. Number 5. El Hebner Gets Revenge on Raw well, One of the common storylines integrated throughout the Attitude Era was El Hebner's hatred for Triple H. Triple H, along with the McMahon family, had made Hebner's life hell, and eventually in April of 2000, he had enough. During a title showdown on Raw between Triple H and Hebner, the game was once again overstepping the mark. This time, Hebner wasn't going to stand for it. When Jericho performed a lion salt, Hebner would perform a quick three count, costing the game the WWE title. This highlighted that whilst wrestlers think they can push referees around, it can come back to bite them when they least expect it. 
even though this decision was eventually reversed, it was an iconic moment and one of the standout moments of the entire Attitude Era. Number 4. VAR and WWE on SmackDown The rivalry in 2007 between The Undertaker and Batista exceeded everyone's expectations. The two had some absolute wars and their chemistry in the ring can never be denied. One of the more underrated matches was a steel cage encounter of May of 2007, and the finish saw both men climb over the top of the cage at the same time. The referees were lost for a second and were unsure as to what to do. That's when they remember that WWE was a show with multiple cameras and they could just re-watch the footage from the finish of the match. This was a tremendous addition to the finish of the match as it made the referees look competent and for once it was a case of WWE not treating their fans like total idiots. Unfortunately, instances of this nature are rare and WWE replaying footage to decide important decisions has rarely been used on TV, which is a massive shame as it's a great tool that can be used incredibly effectively. Number 3. Outsmarting Triple H at WrestleMania 21 By the time the WWE arrived at WrestleMania 21, Triple H had become accustomed to cheating in his matches. The game would do whatever it took to retain his world title and his character predominantly revolved about being obsessed with being world champion. However, when Triple H attempted to get himself DQ'd in the main event of WrestleMania 21, the referee was having none of it. During his match with Batista, the game would attempt to hit the animal with a steel chair, but the referee Mike Kyoda intercepted and grabbed the chair from the hands of the game. This was a brilliant move on the part of the referee. By taking the chair away from Triple H, the referee showed that under no circumstances was he going to see the main event of WrestleMania come to an end via a lousy DQ. Number 2. Eddie Guerrero is caught in the act on SmackDown The late great Eddie Guerrero made a career out of lying, cheating and stealing, but it didn't always work. In 2004 in an episode of SmackDown, Guerrero was teaming with Booker T to take on the duo of Rob Van Dam and Rey Mysterio. During the final stages of the match, Guerrero placed one of the tag title belts on Mysterio that pretend like Mysterio just struck him with the gold. But this backfired when referee Nick Patrick turned around to see Guerrero mocking Mysterio. The match would then continue with Mysterio eventually getting the win for his team. This was one of the rare occasions where Guerrero had been caught cheating and it was a great way to plant the seeds for Guerrero's eventual heel turn that would come a few short months after this notable match. And number 1. The Referee Uses All of His Senses at WrestleMania 39 The main event of Night 2 of WrestleMania 39 saw Roman Reigns take on Cody Rhodes for the undisputed WWE Universal title. The majority of the first portion of the match was built around Bloodline member Solo Sokoa interfering from the outside, but that was until the referee caught wind of what was happening. One of the spots in the match saw Sokoa use Rhodes' weight belt as a weapon, and although the referee didn't directly see the belt being used, the sound it made was too loud to ignore. Sokoa would then be ejected from ringside to the delight of the fans. This was a smart presentation of the referee, as if the referee simply ignored it, it would have been ridiculous. The sound of the belt hitting Rose was deafening, and the referee was insanely close to the action, so it was without question the right move. WWE referees traditionally receive a ton of criticism as they're usually oblivious to everything that's going around them, but this was the one time where WWE remembered that their referees have ears. But there you have it folks, 10 times WWE referees outsmarted the wrestlers. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.